Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This week's edition of Maverick Studio, we're going to look at, well, the overshadowed motion update. When I say overshadowed, of course. It's <laughs> very overshadowed. Yeah, it's Final very Cuts Pro yeah. is getting all the thunder. Yeah, yeah. and uh, But motion is a, what, a dot o two five dot o dot two. 10.0.3 and 5.0.2, right. Right. And so, uh, there's some things that you want to show us that, that make a difference in our workflow. I, I do, I do. There's several updates to Motion that happened at the same time that Final Cut Pro was updated. And what's interesting is that the updates in Motion are actually the same in Final Cut. So if you understand huh. them in one application, you'll understand them in the other. And they're, they're very useful, and they're also causing some confusion and a few problems, but in general, they're very good. So the first thing I want to talk about is keyframing. Keyframing, yes. There so, made some changes there for they sure. They sure did. So I have a motion project, and I have it. I have a drop zone in this project. It almost looks like the Arizona flag. It almost looks like the Arizona <laughs> flag. Is that right? I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. did that for you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so basically, the, key, the way the keyframes now work is they um, work the same in Final Cut and Motion now, and they, which they actually did before. But the way they work is that once you've set a keyframe on a particular parameter. A particular parameter, yes. then any changes to that parameter at any other point in time will automatically set another keyframe. Great. So, even without turning on recording. So one less click each time. Yes, one less click, and you don't need to turn recording on because Motion has this record button down here. Let me zoom in a little bit. This keyframe recording yes, button. Yes, I see that. And if you let's look, see in the inspector, everything is gray. Sure. But if I click that little button, you just set a keyframe. Uh, I actually didn't. I turned on recording, uh, and now everything is red, which means if I change any parameter, it'll set a keyframe. Got it. Okay, on anything, and that can be a little dangerous. So I'm actually going to that turn button that off. scares me. Actually, it's scary. You can also double click on it, by the way, and you can say um, uh, you can change it. Actually, they got they got rid of the other option here because of the new behavior, which I'll explain in a minute. What was so, just remind me what the other option said? You can't remember, can you? Uh, it said record keyframes on animated parameters only. <laughs> good. That's, that's what it said. Good. That's what it said. <laughs> Very so good. I'm going to leave that off. Okay. So we're back to gray uh, parameter values. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this guy and I want him to move him off the screen. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down and move him off the screen. And my playhead is it, I'm going to move to the beginning of the project and I want to see set a keyframe right now for the position. Yeah. So um, and this works the same as in Final Cut, by the way. Oops. So I'm going to set a keyframe. Got it. Just click in that uh -huh. little keyframe icon, right? Got it. And now I'm going to move forward, I don't know, let's just say about a minute, a second, not a minute. That'll take forever. Oh, yeah. Like one it's a second. Long animation. And now I want to bring him into the screen. Now notice what happened. Because I set a keyframe on position, it's red. Okay? Ah. So it's telling you, hey, guess what? And this does not happen in Final Cut, by the way. Right. I don't, we'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It's warning you, hey, any changes you make on this is going to set another keyframe. So this time, I, I can't see it. I can't drag it, but I can drag in my position x value field to bring it in. Or even better, I'll just click in it and type 0 because I want it to be right in the center. Sure. Okay. And that set another keyframe. Okay. So now if I drag between this, da -da -da, da -da -da, it flies in. Nice. Okay. So while we're here, I'm going to have to sit still for a little while. So I'm going to move forward in time. I'm going to set another keyframe Got it. with the same exact value. And by the way, it looks like I typed with minus one. Let me go back to that keyframe and park on it for a second. Yeah, minus. That should be a zero. Okay. Yeah, exactly zero. So move forward in time. I'm going to set another keyframe for the exact same value. So I'm not moving anything. Yeah. I have to manually. That's where I do have to manually set a keyframe if I want it to be the same value. I'll move forward in time again. And then I'll drag in the X value to drag this off the screen. Okay. So check this out. I'll go to the beginning and play this. Comes in, sits still, moves off. Okay. That's exactly Pretty what I forward. expect it to do. That's what you expect it to do. Sometimes when you do this, like I just did, you might see it kind of move between those keyframes. Kind because of does a little jiggy with it thing? A little, it gets jiggy with it. It yeah. does. It, it does. It's a little Lindy Hop. Right. right. It does in there. <laughs> um, and the reason is that uh, these keyframes are Bezier by default. In other words, the interpolation eases them. And you right. might see a little motion between those. But in motion, that's really easy to solve. I'm going to hit Command-8 for the, for the uh, keyframe editor. And there's a little curve. And this is the part that should be straight, and it is. But right. if it isn't for you, and sometimes it isn't, this time it worked, you choose interpolation and go to a linear just for this, just for that, that segment, little pieces, yeah. that little segment. But this happened to work perfectly. Okay, so that's that's number one. And um, let me shift Z just to get that back out, and F8 to close that. Oops, we don't want that. 
Command 8 to close the keyframe editor. The same thing happens in Final Cut Pro. Now, I'm gonna to switch to Final Cut Pro because I want you to see this. This is a little bit funky. So in Final Cut Pro, I have this connected clip. Got it. Okay. I'm gonna click the transform effect or enable the transform effect and scale it down. Got it. In Final Cut, this automatically scales around its anchor point. It's nice. Right. It's motion better. doesn't do that. You don't have in motion you have to hold down shift and option right. here. Okay. So now I want her to start off the screen. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait a minute. And I'm gonna drag her off left, there we go. And let's just drag her completely off the left. I'll go to the video inspector and set a keyframe. And let's make sure that Y is zero, just so she comes right. in straight. Again, same thing, set a keyframe, bang. Now they didn't turn red here, which would be kind of nice, but um, they don't turn red. So now I'm gonna move forward in time. I actually started this kind of early, but I'll show you how to fix that real quick. I'll move forward, and now I'm gonna drag in position X Oh. And see the motion path? Yeah, I see that. I didn't need to set a keyframe set, first, right? right? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna set X to zero. So now we just have her coming in. Yeah. Okay, she comes in. So now I'm gonna move forward a little more in time, set it kind of a keyframe. Got it. Move forward a little more in time and drag position X to drag her out of there, okay? And if I play that back, she comes in and she goes out, okay? Just like we'd expect. Just like you'd expect. Now sometimes you will see a little motion there too. Right. And in Final Cut, here's one little trick. In Final Cut, there's no animation the editor. There's there's no well, graph like in the. There's uh, no graph. And actually, let me let me mention that. If I select this clip and hit uh, Control V to open the video animation editor, and zoom should... in a little bit here, for transform, there's our keyframe. So if I wanted this animation to really start at the beginning of the project, I could just adjust these sure. really easily. Yeah. Okay. Nothing nothing new here. Right. And then you know come out at the end. So mm -hmm. that kind of changes the timing. But I can't adjust the curve. If I had animated opacity, the cool thing here is with opacity, if I go down to opacity, sorry for jumping around there, I'm just gonna um, option click to set some keyframes for opacity. So opacity has this cool graph. So I, actually, I don't wanna drag that down. I wanna drag the ends down. Now the fast way to, to animate opacity, of course, is just to drag these guys in. Sure. You, know, to, you can just fade in. But you can keyframe it so it's starting at like 27%, it ramps up. And then opacity, you can actually ease by dragging left or right Ooh, here. Oh, that's isn't that cool? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's click and drag left or right will make that ease. I want to be able to do this for position and scale and rotation, but I can't. Um, transform doesn't allow you to pop open uh, and see a curve. So just an aside, what you do have to do is right click directly on the little keyframe, and uh, it can be a little hard to get and choose uh, linear or smooth. I see. Okay. Okay, so that's one thing is the, the keyframe editor and kind of how that whole thing works. Um, and it's nice. I like the fact that it, it works that way uh, now. It's sure. just faster and easier. The second thing, and this is great. Okay, so drop zones, you ever use them? Yes. In Final Cut? Yeah, we have some or? like templates and stuff. Templates, and yeah. You, you can make really cool uh, motion graphics to, for Final Cut Pro. Right. They just drop their clips in the right. drop zone and, and it works. So in fact, this this little project is a really quick generator I made. It's just got a background and a drop zone. I mean, right. it's about as simple as you can possibly imagine. But the cool thing is, I'm actually going to reset. It doesn't matter. I had already published this, so we can use the one I published. Now, normally, when you put some content in a drop zone, you have no ability to change what that content uh, looks like at all. You can't you can't change. It just fits in the way it fits in, and and you're stuck. So I'll just take some uh, an iStock photo picture of something here and drag it in here, okay? Oh, it needs to be scaled and maybe moved around yeah. a bit. Well, and, and before we've had some options, we've had this uh, this different fit options mm -hmm. yeah. where you could you could change it, but now um, we can actually change the panning and scale. These are brand new parameters in motion. I see. So you could do a thing where you could force it to fit down. It was fit, stretch, or um, I can't remember the name of the other one, but the only one that made sense was fit. Right. Um, so now I can actually say, hey, look, I want to scale this thing down within the drop zone uh, and I want to move it over to the left or what have you. So it can really reframe something in a drop zone. Sure. So great for motion. You may think, oh, great. Well, I'll just publish those when I create something for Final Cut Pro. You can't this, publish them. You're going to oh, tell me that. No, 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 no. You can. You can. Here's a little pop-up menu. You can. You, actually, these ah, are it, were published here, so right. I can unpublish. But you don't need to. Here's the cool thing. Here's the cool thing. So... Um, and by the way, a big shout out to uh, to Andy Neal for this because um, uh, he does a site Time Saver Tutorials, and we were chatting, and he figured this out. It's not this is not documented that I've been able to find anywhere, but it's a great feature, and it really should be documented. So what I'm going to do is go to my generators browser. I'm going to select this Ripple Training category, and there's the little generator, generator. I made. Uh -huh. Super simple. I'm going to hit Q to do a connect edit, 
and here it is in my timeline, okay? So now if I select it, uh, in the generator inspector, there's is, your drop zone. Yeah, there's this, and this is normal, right? We've seen this before. I had actually published these, but you don't need to. You right. don't need okay. to, so here's why. So let me select some content. I'll click the drop zone little well there. And then, Justine. Um, oh yeah, there's Justine, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use this shot right here. Uh -huh. I'm going to click that to put that in the drop zone and say apply the clip. Okay. Okay, now I've got that now shot in there. Now move her around and get, get all the, yeah. Can't, just, right? Before before you got what you got. Right. And you didn't complain. Right. You know, it's a, you get right. what you get and you don't make a fit. Um, <laughs> but here's the cool thing is if you, you don't even need to have the transform effect enabled here. This is this little guy down right down there. Right. I'll just let me zoom in. You don't need to have transform effect enabled. All you need to do is with the clip selected, double click on that on that drop zone. Ah. Okay, now what I'm doing, if I drag in here, I'm transforming the clip. You can still see the border right. of the drop zone, and I'm transforming the clip within the drop zone. Oh my gosh, that's great. Okay, is that's that, isn't that awesome? Yeah, Ben so, Balzer is gonna freak out when he sees that. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to. He's yeah, gonna, I'm gonna yeah. right now, he's watching this yeah. and he's going, he's got like co coffee in his mouth, and he's going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing that right now. This is, <laughs> this is a great thing. Uh -huh. So, so yes, you could publish yeah. those parameters. So if I just go back to those in the generator, I could do these by numerical values over here right. since I publish these. But you don't have to publish them because you can directly mm -hmm. directly manipulate the. Image oh, that's great! Right in the that's fantastic, zone. fantastic. So not a lot of new features, but um, so a couple of neat things that affect both Motion and Fonica Pro. Wonderful. Well, hope you got hope you got the. Um, to the gravity of the tip in Motion 5.02. And if you're wanting to get more gravity on Motion, uh, we have some awesome training at ribbletraining.com, all by Mark Spencer. And check out our check out our library. A lot, a lot of training on Final Cut by Steve. Uh, yep. Anyway, thanks for watching our show. We're really glad that you support, uh, support our show, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.